County Library Advisory Board. Please stand for the pledge and a moment of silence. Doc Jones is still considered to be a guest. He won't be official until September 10, so welcome. Yeah. And then uh, Ann Ivey is the director of the Eustis Memorial Library. And uh, hopefully she'll become a regular <laughs> after September 10th as well. We'll talk about that a little later, but welcome, Ann. Thank you. We do have Rebecca's new to us. She's the director of the Tavares Public Library, and we're very excited to have her here as well. Yes, we are. <laughs> Since I'm, I'm representing Tavares Library, we're happy to have you be with us. Thank you. I don't think we have else Okay. That's it. All right. Okay. Uh, Chrissy, do we have the notice of meeting? I'm sure we do. Yes, we do. Of course. I know it's very traffic. It is. All right, have you all had an opportunity to look at the minutes? Just take a quick look. I know you received them. Any comments? Any corrections? Any additions? Chrissy does a great job. I don't ever anticipate any of that. So, yes. So, do I hear a motion? I, I move and that the minutes will be accepted as submitted. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved as written. Citizen question and comment period. Already, commission liaison report. There has been a lot going on at the county the last few weeks, but you'll be glad to know not much of this library related. <laughs> so I checked with George. I said, "Am I forgetting anything?" Or that not to the library's no. So I have no no official report from the, from the county commission. Well, we're glad you're busy. It's summer. <laughs> yeah, it's summer. Right. My report. I really don't have anything to say. It's that I think we should be very, very grateful that George is with us. Yes. I, I spent part of last week in North Carolina, and the weather there is definitely better than here. <laughs> so I, I call my wife, you know, all the time. She's like, it's, I go, oh, it's so humid here. And she goes, oh, it's humid here too. I'm like, no, no, it's not. It is not the same level of humidity at all. So thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Okay. That's all. All right. I, I do have a front and a back for you guys tonight, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So, a personnel announcement. Um, as we talked about before, Ron Moore passed away several months ago. He was the supervisor of the Paisley Library. Jonathan Dolce, who was the who is the supervisor of Astor, stepped in, managed both facilities, and did such a great job. We made it permanent for him, so we're glad. So he is now supervising both the Paisley and the Astor County branches. Staff really loves him. They tell me that all the time. They have no problems with calling me, telling me what Jonathan's doing. Um, he's reorganizing the collection a little bit, providing more seating to make it more comfortable, and revitalizing the programs, working with both staff to come up with some great programming ideas. Very glad that he's done that. State aid update. We're at that time of year again where we are starting the state aid process here for the county library system. And that's part of what we'll talk about with the annual plan of service uh, later, that we have to have that as part of our package. But for, uh, if you're not familiar with the State Aid to Libraries Operating Grant, it's required legally by the state of Florida, Chapter, 200, Chapter 257 of the Florida Statutes. And State Aid provides financial encouragement for all 67 counties to offer freely accessible public library services to those taxed for the service. And the law actually authorizes a match up to 25 cents on each dollar of local expenditure for library services. Our budget for the whole Lake County Library System pulls in about $9 million for all of us, the county, all the member libraries together. So our share of state aid is based on that. They have a formula that they do. Last year, uh, we saw a slight increase of state aid. Um, let's see, hold on. Got my notes wrong backwards. 
last year, yeah, 2018, 2019, I'm sorry, was a decrease to 20.5 million. It was an 11.5% decrease from the previous year. So as a system, we only received $171,395. We usually get around 200, 220. This upcoming year, they've estimated that there's going to be $21.8 million, which is an increase, and we'll get about $10,000 additionally. And the, the Board of County Commissioners has made it a legislative um, priority for state aid to be increased from 21 million to hopefully 33 million, which it was in 2000, 2001. That was the highest. And back at that point in time, we probably got about half a million dollars from state aid at that point. So they can raise that, and we get more money overall. And those funds we use in my office for the whole system. We use it for computer replacements. We use it for the youth programming that we do every summer. A literacy program, we pay for the databases that all the patrons have as well. So it's, and it's important money for us to have. We just like to see them. It sounds like they're going to be increasing it every year, which, which we hope for. And let's see. Impact fee awards. All the impact fee interlocals have been signed and fully executed. We've opened up some of the POs already for... Umatilla's PO is open and Howie's PO is open, so they can start submitting receipts for their projects. And this various public library should be open in the next day or two, so we can start working on those projects. And again, the Howie Library received five hundred thousand for a meeting room expansion. Umatilla received forty-one thousand for uh, furniture for their meeting room, and Tavares received five hundred thousand for their building expansion as well. And. Uh, Big news on my side, all of the interlocals, all 10 of the interlocals, including the one from Eustis Memorial Library, have all been approved by their city commissions. So the next step is to bring them to the Board of County Commissioners on September 10th, 2019. And then we will have our interlocals for the next three years. <coughs> and that's a consent uh, agenda item. There's no need for any. You're more than welcome to show up. But there's it's not a big published book. There's no need for vast public support of that. You're welcome to come and say it would be fun, right? Right. Well, <laughs> we have it is. Time with it. Yeah, see what it is. But there shouldn't be any issues with it, and then we will have uh, 16 libraries in the Lake County Library System. It's been a long time to bring Eustace on board, and and worked very hard to get here, and we did a lot of work together. We got. We'll talk about the timeline <laughs> as we go. It's, it's going to be fun. And. Uh, just got uh, three more things on, on mine. One of them is a slogan. Ron Russo, who's my boss, he's the deputy county manager. He replaced Bill Beach, for anybody who remembers Bill. Uh, one of his contracts, he's getting Lake Express buses. And part of that contract is that we get the county gets a certain percentage of the, the decals of the rat will be for like uh, lo uh, logos. Logans. Slogans. Logans. Or logos. Slogans. Logos. Excuse me. Slogans. It's, I need supper, that's what it is. And the staff, all the member libraries, all the branches got together and we brainstormed and we came up with two that tied for first place. And I'm not asking for any action tonight because we still have to do some more work, but we'll bring it back to the LAB for approval and then we'll take it to the BCC for final approval. The first one is Lake County Library System, Your Story Begins Here. And the second one, Lake County Library System, Discover, Connect, Inspire. So we're still working on those. The <coughs> Your Story Begins Here has a trademark with the New York Public Library. So we're investigating whether or not we can use it. There are lots of other libraries using it as well. The County Communications is interested in rebranding us once we get this set and voted in, which will include the website redesign, brochures, our new template, and redesigning our library but it's going to start probably sometime in January, and it'll take them a few months to get everything done. So uh, we'll bring it back to you guys for approval once we're ready to go. But it was, we had four or five pages, and I think Kathy can attest to this, but we had a lot of good ones, and some, <laughs> some interesting ones from there. But we'll bring it back to you guys. Um, another program that we're doing, September is National Library Card Sign-Up Month, and Tuesday, September 24th, is National Voter Registration Day. 
So Carrie Little, who's in my office, one of our program coordinators, and Nancy, the supervisor of elections, we're going to do a month-long program called Books and Ballots. Mm -hmm. Books and Ballots. Carrie and Nancy are going to visit all the libraries, and they're going to promote getting a library card, signing up to register to vote, and Chrissy came up with the name Books and Ballots. I got to give her that great. one. I like that one. Great. Yeah. So we'll talk about, you know, because all the libraries take the voter registration forms. You can register at the library and be passed on to the supervisor of elections. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Hopefully everybody coming into the library will already have a library card. But they can extol the virtues of how important that is. And, and perhaps they would want to sign up for vote by mail. That's true. They if they already well. have a card. They can already do that as well. Registered. Yeah, but they're going to have some, they'll be reaching out to the member directors to set up times to come out. And I guess we could maybe even do Eustace. Maybe. We'll see. Um, we'll be doing that. We're excited about that. And the last thing I've got before we turn everything over, I want to share a video with everyone from the Fruitland Park Grand Opening. Very short video. Take a second for it to warm up. Communications visited during the opening and took a video. It was very romantic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to warm up a little bit. There we go. Unfortunately, I didn't bring speakers with me. I thought this was going to be a little bit louder, so you'll have to listen carefully. George, in the future, we need to get our subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> captions. Closed captions. Yeah, that. Our library system in the last year had over a million items uh, in circulation. 35,000 of that was just here at the Park Library. The results, obviously, a great high-level service for the residents of the municipal libraries and also countywide. It's amazing what can be accomplished with a little determination and hard work. Not only will this library continue to be the leading customer-facing service provider for the park, but will strengthen city-citizen relationships through the exciting and multifaceted service platform. The communications department has done a video, or is doing a video for each one of the locations, and we're releasing one a month. Um, I think we've done Leesburg, Cooper. Uh, Chris, you can't tell me how much. I can't remember all the ones we've done. Leesburg, Cooper, Lady Lake. Just no, it hasn't been released yet. Yeah, I haven't seen those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll send them all out. So there's been, I think, what four that have been done. Usually, carries something. Yeah, Cooper, Leesburg. Aster was done. Okay. Maybe I saw it. Nobody else saw it. Okay. That's all I have for my report. So thank you very much. Thank you. Board member comments. All right. Old business. Eustis Memorial Library update. All right, very exciting. I guess back to me again? Okay. Yes. So as we mentioned at the top, and I is the director of the Eustis Memorial Library. About three weeks ago, you were at the city commission. August 1st. Meeting. August 1st, thank you. And she presented to her commission uh, about the proposal for accepting the Industrial Local to join, and they accepted. All five of them. All five. Agreed. Very excited. So we can't really do anything until October 1st once the contracts go into it. And we really ha can't do anything until we get used to this on our database and our automation system. That's sort of the crutch, uh, or the crux of the whole thing. Right now they're on Cersei Dynex. And so we've got a timeline. Sean and I have met with uh, Ann, and we are talking about it all the time, what to do. <laughs> we've ordered library cards for Eustace. 
So we're excited about that. But once we get the data merged, so Bywater, who is the company that hosts and manages our automation system, our, our catalog, they will get the data from and from Cersei Dynix, and they will integrate the patrons and all of the books and DVDs and everything, and they'll just migrate the data into our catalog. It's magic. I don't know how they do it. They're going to take care of it. They're going to take care of all the duplications. So if there is a patron that has a Eustis Memorial Library card and they already have a county card, they will merge those. We won't have any loss of fines or fees. We know weird things are going to happen. That's just standard when you're dealing with technology. Once we get them on and get them up and running with the automation system, we'll bring in the print management software, the reservation for the PCs, and then it's just tying in the small things to bring them up to speed and then database access and everything else. We don't have a timeline yet. Uh, unfortunately, the owner of the company had a, a death in the family. He was away for a few days. We got a message and he'll get back to us. It took them about two weeks to migrate our data when we did this four or five years ago. But that was like a million books. And right now we're talking about 100,000 items, 120,000 items that used this. So we're thinking maybe a long weekend. We're hoping. We're not sure. But it's, we're excited about it. And the staff there is excited, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, we're just moving forward. Everything is just hinging on getting them integrated, getting their data migrated over, and we'll be set. We'll be able to walk in, we'll have daily courier service going, and we'll be able to use the card anywhere. I think if I could just speak for a minute, I'm, I'm really happy about this only because as a new person to Lake County, it is really great that I'm no longer going to have to be turning people away because they don't live within the 11 miles of Eustis, which I love that we have that, but it's, for me, as I just think libraries are for the community, so I'm really excited this happened, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Even though it's going to be tedious, I think it's going to be a lot of great stuff for all of us, so thank you. All excited. Very great. So, that's it. New business. Okay. Okay. So here goes the... Uh, Fiscal year 2019-2020 annual plan of service. I've got, I'll have it displayed so we can go over each one. You guys can give me your thoughts. If you, if you want to type, yeah. Okay. We want to make this as easy as we could. I know that the previous meeting we went over what we had done last year. I brought you guys up to speed on what we had accomplished, what we have. What we're changing. So remember, this is a year-long document that's just sort of to guide our activities over the next year. And the state does require this as part of our state aid application. So after the approval tonight, we'll move on. So first set of goals, administration. Goal one, provide adequate, adequate funding to ensure viability of library services by researching strategies for increased funding. That's one we've had standard for the past couple of years. Just something that we always try to do. And jump in if you have any suggestions or changes. Implement standardized training for all library staff. Review the draft of the new employee orientation manual that county library staff is working on right now. And create a county specific and supervisor addenda for the manual. And this is a standard operating procedure that we are using, which has how to do everything in COHA, which is our automation system, how we handle fines and fees, just so we've got it standard and somebody can jump in and take care of it. Goal three, ensure relevancy, accuracy, consistency, and timeliness in statistical reporting by discussing how the statistical reports can be used at all levels within the Lake County Library system. I don't know if you have any. Right. Oh, I know. I should have brought your mouse. I know. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> train county staff in backup roles for library support services manager, which is Sean O'Keefe in my office. And that was one of the uh, recommendations from the Inspector General report that we had last year. Um, Sean does a lot of things that no one is officially his backup. So if he goes on vacation, what do we do if something happens? And we have uh, one of my staff in the office training. We're working on another one at a branch as well. We'll continue. And some of my monthly training sessions in Kaha and Savannah for member directors and user group committees, we do those at our monthly meetings. Goal four, collaborate with community groups to increase participation in library programs. So partnering with community organizations that welcome new residents, like apartment complexes, 
work with Elevate Lake to welcome new employers and their employees to our area, especially with uh, the Kroger coming in. That'll be a huge thing for us. And working with the member libraries, collaborate with nursing homes and care centers to continue the Books by Mail program, which is what we, uh, Books by Mail is out of Cooper Memorial. I think they handle that there. Goal five, provide inviting libraries where all Lake County residents can read, reflect, collaborate, and connect by developing a new facilities plan through focus groups and internal services. Previously, we have a facilities plan that was done in 2005, and it's woefully out of date. It refers to Kagan as the Citrus Ridge Library. There's no mention of Howie or Montverde at that point in time as not being part of our system. So we've had a lot of changes. And instead of going out and having an uh, outside consultant where we have to pay fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, I'd like for us to do this, attempt to do this in-house, using county facilities, the maintenance for all the cities. We can come up with a master plan working with the state library as well for uh, standards that we should all have that we can use for the next 15 years of growth, mainly for our facilities. How much meeting space will be needed? Will we have to, uh, any libraries need to be grown larger like Mineola? You guys are about to expand as well to help, so something that the member libraries can take back to their, their boards and their commissions as here, here's a reason why we need to expand. And then uh, last one in this one, goal seven. Oh, or, goal six. I, I moved it. Oh, up. you moved it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, we will update the technology plan and investigate new technologies for internal use similar to the Savannah uh, statistical program that we've got. What else can we bring inside to help access, for patrons to have access to current technology? And, you know, bringing use to SON. That's going to help, right? Yeah. So goal seven work with staff on all levels to identify policies that need to be updated or refreshed. This comes from the Inspector General's audit, again, from 2018. We will be presenting an updated LCC-7 to the advisory board in the next couple of months. LCC-7 is the policy that um, how a library can join the Lake County Library system. And it, it has information about how you can, what it takes to join, but no, no guidelines about what happens once you're a member. You know, how do we, are you continuing your certain number of hours a week? Do you have a full-time employee? So we want to make sure we, we hit all the <coughs> important parts. And we're going to update LCC 63, LCC 34, and LCC 61 policies. LCC 61 is, all right, I always get 34 and 61 confused. One of them is meeting room usage for member libraries currently. And I wanted to encompass the branch libraries as well. The other one of the two policies between 34 and 61 is patron code of conduct for inside the library. Right now it just addresses for member libraries. It doesn't address for the county branches what we can do. So that will be something that once we get those done, we will bring them to the LAB for recommendation changes, additions, and then we will move it up. <coughs> and of course, LCC 63 is the policy that guides us with the impact fees. I know there have been some questions and concerns, especially with that last voting round, what we can do. We will be making some changes to that as well. Of course, bringing that to the LAB, then to the Board of County Commissioners. So, youth services, expand support for Lake County school students. So acquire reading, reading lists, make lists available through integration with COHAR automation system. Uh, loop t alert tutors at public libraries are welcome to use our facilities. Based on statistical reporting, market our services to families and students. And then D is one we've talked about before, uh, past couple months. Work with an ad hoc library advisory board committee to investigate the possibility of a virtual card for all Lake County school students. And Evelyn uh, asked me about that before the meeting and I reached out to Dr. Corngay I'm going to contact her again to set up a meeting so we can discuss what the school system would like for us to do, what we can do in partnership with them, or a potential virtual library card for the students. <coughs> Goal two is continuing from last year, focus on early childhood programming, but we added homeschooling group and we added STEAM related, so it's science, technology, engineering, art, and math in there. 
and again provide training and tip sheets to library staff to share with parents who attend their story time programs. Focus on a little too high, Chrissy, sorry. Oh, I did it. Yeah. It's like, ah, we don't need that one. We'll just skip that one. <laughs> one more. One, one, one more. There we go. Focus on early childhood programming. Um, oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, so provide training and tip sheets. So you did that. Reach out to licensed daycare centers to provide information about our system. And maximize teen spaces to allow for more social interaction. I think we've sort of had that one every year because if you make a teen space one year, they're going to love it. And like five minutes later, they're going to hate it. So I think for us, this is always an interesting quandary of how we do that. But you know, based on current current knowledge and what we think they like. We'll move from there. And develop a coordinated youth outreach plan. And this will be with Linda Goff, who's our program coordinator for the Children's Services. Again, she will visit all the Lake County schools. She'll work with the member libraries and their staff to visit the schools as well, to reach out to give them the information that they need. Every library sort of has an informal liaison. We want to continue that to make sure that they are meeting with the staff in the schools. And again, use our Savannah Statistical Report to look at material checkout and programming attendance to market service as needed. One of the things that Savannah has just released, which we haven't played with yet, is an app for an iPad. So when we have a program, we can scan everybody's library card or scan a general library card saying that you were here at the Eustis Library or you were at Leesburg, and that will integrate into our statistical package. So we'll be able to get a better idea of how people are using us. Uh, adult services, second to last grouping. Goal one, provide a variety of programs, lectures, film showings, and other formal and informal activities to adult residents and visitors. Again, using our statistical information, develop more programs that are appropriate to what our patrons want, purchase materials related uh, to interest of the localized communities. Uh, outreach and adult program, <coughs> programming coordinators will continue to offer support for technology related classes and presentation of library services. And again, as a reminder, Carrie is more than welcome to uh, in my office to go with you if you need her to do a program for you. She is spectacular at doing presentations. And then offering the government in our office program at each municipal library for city government employees. This is something that we started in the fall where we deliver books and materials to Lake County, uh, BCC employees, clerk of court, property appraiser, sheriff's office, supervisor of elections, anybody that's on the Lake County clerk of court's delivery system, we will deliver books and materials to the office. Makes it easier for them to use it and use our services. And then work directly with municipal and county agencies to provide programming. I met with Megan, who's the new permanent director of Ag Extension here, and we're going to develop some programs with all of our libraries, with 4-H related. And goal two, offer learning tools, services, and support staff to build literacy and life skills essential in navigating today's ever-changing society. I think we're just going to continue to do what we're doing. Continue to recruit, maintain volunteers for the literacy program, as well as other areas that we need in the system. And again, use statistical reports to analyze and market products. Collection. Develop a system-wide collection development procedure and plan. Beth Reichart, who is a librarian at Cooper Memorial, librarian extraordinaire, she purchases all materials for the six county branches, as well as manages the bestseller lease program for the member libraries. I don't think she's picking and choosing everything. Kathy, does she, does Beth pick out the best sellers? Or is that? She has an automatic author list. That's right, we have the automatic author list. So she does that. She's going to work on a collection development plan that we can all use in the system for deselection of material, monitoring best sellers, how to request specific titles, something that we've been working on. And a lot of the member directors and branch managers have been asking. Again, use statistical reports. And as I said, we'll develop recommendations for deselection of material in our system. Goal two, streamline acquisitions and processing procedures to maximize efficiency. We've had a few changes in our staffing in the county system. So the branches are going to process countywide material. And the discovery team, which was a team that we put together last year that got 
slowed down when we had some budgeting issues, the discovery team is looking into ways of maintaining our bibliographic database. What that means is basically whenever we get a new book or we want to add copies to our system, how that process goes. When Kathy or Rebecca purchases something, how do we get that book added into the system? How do we get it there quickly so that the patrons can get it? And we're just looking at ways of letting more staff have involvement into this process so that we can do it much more efficiently. And I think this is the final one. Yeah, marketing. Developed a focused marketing plan. We have been meeting with Lake County Communications Department to learn and understand their processes, how we can get our best practices for our promotion and marketing. I know we've spoken about this in this group before. The Lake County Library System as a whole, we do 300 programs a month. Not every one of them needs a press release, <laughs> but we still have some major ones that do need attention and need that you know, county communications reach for doing that. So we're trying to decide, create a priority list if Mineola has a huge author that they've paid, well, an author that they've paid for, that's a tier one that gets a press release, that potentially gets a video, that may get some other things done in our system. It's for them to understand what our needs are. And you know, they, the kind of communications to does an amazing job, but they've got a lot on their plates already. So anyway, we can help them. And again, statistical usage, survey methodologies that we could implement, surveys, electronic surveys that we can do to find out what people like, what we can't do, what, what, what they like that we've done, what we can change, what they would like to see. I think Savannah is set up to do a 12-week new patron report. So once you get a library card 12 weeks, 12 weeks later, you get an email. And we just haven't turned that on yet. But it'll be like, you know, what did you like? You know, we can target with three or four different questions that we'll discuss with the member directors. And then uh, Carrie Little will create, or she's working on an ad hoc group in my office, but an ad hoc group of the member directors for a specific focus on a two-year marketing plan that we can then turn over to County Communications for help in doing that sort of thing as well. And I think that's it, right? Cool. Okay. So I guess at this point we just ask for, if anybody has any suggestions or thoughts or concerns. I just have one as usual, and you probably already know what I'm going to say. Um, I like your virtual library card. Uh, suggestion. Uh, the window of opportunity working with a school board is in the summer. Uh, right now, you probably wouldn't want to go over there and try to make an appointment with anybody um, to move that forward. I personally would like to see that as a priority. Um, it's great to have it up um, and talk about it, um, but unless some um, Specific energy is put behind that idea, it's not going to float. And I think it's really important that we try to encourage young people to have a virtual card or a real plastic card and make it a priority. And as far as the informal partnership, I, I like the idea of an informal partnership. I like the idea of a formal partnership better. Um, Chrissy, can you roll that <coughs> back to the section? <clears throat> I think we have to have a... I want to see what the language is I use on it. Just to make sure. That's right. You guys can read it a second time. Okay, so an ad hoc library advisory board to investigate the possibility of a virtual card. Um, Talking with some of the other directors in the state that have, have gone through with this, Tampa, Jacksonville, right. um, in my experience with it in the past, it will have to be a formal agreement. We'll have to have memorandums of understanding and our local agreements, more or less stating that if the school system will give us a data dump of all their student information, we will put it into our catalog or our collection. But we will not share that with anybody, we won't sell the data, we won't use it, which is what we do anyway with all the patron data, but very specific. So yes, John, it needs to be a very formal, and they have to be behind it. They have to understand the, 
what we can do with this and what we can do with your table. I know we've got the whole system to be responsible for it. <laughs> and I keep pushing this one idea. And so um, I really think that the future of any community is its children. And I think that could be a focus. I agree with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions? Yes, we do. If yeah, you don't mention the school system, okay. I recommend that we uh, approve this uh, Lake County Library System 2019-2020 annual plan of service to go to the county board. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Say aye. Opposed? No. Motion passes. <laughs> I'm up with the next one. Ah, discussion of election of Lake County Library Advisory Board officers. It came so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it just came so fast. But it is in October, we do elect officers again, and the procedure that we follow is first of all we have a nominating committee, and that nominating committee collects people who are willing to serve as officers. We've been schooled in Sunshine uh, State laws, so we know that if you want to volunteer, if you have a recommendation, you need to call George, but before we get that far, uh, we need to bring together a nominating committee. So, what are the officers? Who, who is the, uh, oh, the uh, chair? Right, yes. so I'm the chair. <laughs> Bob is the vice chair, yeah. and Cynthia Birch is the secretary. Okay, but um, the, the, isn't it a rotating? Don't you rotate? I mean, like, you, you don't serve the vice president and the president in the same year. You can serve two terms, two consecutive terms, and then you have to rotate off or take another position. Oh, but every year you have, I see, I don't remember that. Every year you have to be elected? Because I thought it was a two-year term. I thought it was a... I don't know, Jen. I think it is a one year. That is just a one year. What Seems about like you, Bob? Do you remember about it? Every year we have an election? I think it's a one year term. Okay. After all, well, it's like we've had two terms. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think we're confused, confused because we wisely elected Bob two times. Right. Wisely. Right. Yeah, I think it's a one year term, and there are term limits. Right. Yes. Two yes. terms. Right. Right. Yeah. That's my understanding. So. Okay, term of, I'm reading yeah. from the uh, bylaws. I just found it, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Officers shall be elected to serve one year and shall not uh, serve more than two consecutive terms. Officers shall be elected annually at the first regular meeting in October. Okay. Are we going to uh, do the nominating committee today? Yes. Unless we have no volunteers, and then we'll have to phone and persuade people. I will have to phone and persuade Fo people. Yes, George <laughs> will have to okay. phone and persuade what are, people. What are the uh, outlined duties of the nominating committee? The nominating committee makes sure that we have people who are willing to serve. If we have more than one person, then the nominating committee Places. presents them. Yeah, I mean, it, and the, the chair shall appoint a three-person nominating committee to recommend a slate of officers at the September meeting. And uh, is there any gap, there's no definition as to makeup of the nominating committee as opposed to okay. Just three, three people. people. Three people. Three I'll people. volunteer to be on. Thank you. So we got Leslie. Okay. 
Oh, good, you're ready. Yeah. 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 Joy, I'll do it again. Okay, mm -hmm. Stephen. It does matter. Yeah, any, any member. Any, any member. Any member can. Yeah. I need one more. I do. Okay. Okay. We got Carol. Okay. So Chrissy, Chrissy will set up a pre meeting before the September LAB. Is that how we did it? Um, last year, yeah, that we did it at 4.30 at the October meeting. Right. Um, it was at 4.30, it lasted for 30 minutes. It was advertised as such in the paper. Okay. Um, um, and then, so it was a closed door at 4.30. It is public, though, if anyone from the public wants to be there for it. Okay. And then at 5 o'clock, we even started the election. Okay. So then we will do that. Okay. And so okay. September will be the working month. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, what date will we have this meeting in September? Is that when we're talking about having that free meeting? The okay. next meeting is going to be September 19th at Fruitland Park. I'm good. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm that <laughs> For my anniversary, so. <laughs> anniversary of being a member of the LAB? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, good. I, I like that one. <laughs> that will be 27 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. So we will, we, Chrissy and I, will get into contact with everybody and we'll go through the process for that day. Okay. And uh, George, if you would remind people who they contact if they want to work. Uh, me. Right. <laughs> me or Chrissy, whoever you feel more comfortable discussing it with. But yes, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. And Chris will come and take notes, right? Of yes. Our meetings? yes. Yeah. She will be there. Okay. Library related announcements and comments. Shall we start? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We had a busy summer at uh, Umatilla. We had 160 kids sign up. We ran for six weeks. Um, lots of crafts book contest, uh, a little vicious this year on the, on the competitions. Um, For the prizes? Uh, no, just to be the top. Just to be the top, wow. <laughs> we did our adulting for teens again. We did sewing, cooking, swimming, a uh, trip to the museum, again with the ballroom dancing, which they said they would give up the pool before the ballroom dancing. Wow. Don't know. Great. We did light carpentry this year. Uh, we had hammers and screwdrivers. And the thrill of holding the project while somebody is choking the hammer was no. better than a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but you held the... Oh yeah, I held the, the thing. I was like, okay, wow. And I'm you know, the old expression of, don't choke the hammer. And he's like, wow. <laughs> but once we got through, they practiced nailing and putting screws in the wood and everything. We built picture frames. So that was that was really fun. You know, once we survived that, um, we now that we have a new adult programming room, not new, but it's purpose just to be for adult programming. Uh, we had three programs in July: two by Florida Wildlife, which was uh, Black Bear and the Coyotes, which was fascinating. Uh, the Coyote one and one on feral cats, and they were pretty well attended. Um, for this year. We've um, done a lot of outreach to the community. Last year we had five classes. We've reached out to two more daycares. Um, so we're going to be doing seven programs this year, maybe eight. Somebody else has approached us as well. Most of those will be on site at the library. Eight a month? or Eight, eight a week. Oh, eight a week. Yeah, eight a week. Wow. So, yeah. I'm going to shop for like eight a year. Oh, no, we, we're, we're cranking. <laughs> Everybody wants to come over. We've had a massive um, homeschool collection, so we're going to be uh, donation. We're going to be enlarging our donation. I went over to Umatilla High School for their uh, open house where they came and got their teachers and their schedules and everything. Met a lot of kids, had a big setup, and you know, promoting our services. <coughs> um, the first Wednesday, early release day, we had 42 teens. I'm not sure my teen librarian will survive that. <laughs> Let's see, what else have we done? I think that's enough for now. Yeah. Moving along.
Stephen Yeah. Uh, well, this summer I visited one of my favorite museums, the uh, Mystic Seaport of uh, Mystic, Connecticut. And I made contact with them, and uh, the people that I spoke with had a lot of photographs of Mount Dora in their archives because of the antique uh, boat festival on Lake Dora. So I got all their information and gave it to Kathy so they can share archives. But so they are going to send photos or scans? Or? They are going to look at them and publish them. We're working out the language now. They oh, have a, a professional awesome. archive staff. We have me. <laughs> so they're, um, they're being very generous. They are a, a really great bunch of people. Uh, while I was up there this summer, they're uh, putting the final touches on the uh, Mayflower the second. that's in Plymouth. It's been at the shipyard now for two years while well, they've replanked it and done all that work. And uh, within the last couple of years, they redid uh, the Charles W. Morgan, which is the last wooden whaling ship in the world. And it's still there, and it floats, and they took it all over New England a couple of years ago. So it's really good to make that contact with them to share the archive. Over on the library side, like every other library, we had an explosive summer. Um, we had huge increases in circulation and attendance. Our read to win, we had 32% more kids sign up this year. We had 45% more kids um, sit down to our AWE terminals, the early literacy terminals. Um, we had not seen this level of monthly circulation in eight or nine years, so staff is, um, um, you know, a little will be gone, but I keep reminding them that the 30,000 a month total, they still did that, um, and that's our 10-year high, so there's something to shoot for. We had over 10,000 children in attendance for summer, so they're wow. resting. Mm -hmm. Our children's library um, remodel project has been postponed by four weeks. We move out of the children's library on Friday, September 13th into our community room with Camp Bland, which is our temporary children's library for a month, and then we move back in on... October 11th with the grand opening, December 6th. So we'll have pictures. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, hire yeah. staff. <laughs> okay. I guess. Terry's. Yeah. Any updates? Well, um, the one that you're coming. As you know, we're across the street from Tavares High School. And yesterday alone, we had 84 teenagers in our <laughs> library. <laughs> and so pretty much from like a two to five afternoon at time set, we're pretty much just consumed with teenagers. Mm -hmm. So if you ever need to speak to me, call mm -hmm. before 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had 84 teenagers all summer. Mm -hmm. Maybe not all for six months. Um, we had a, a, a pretty successful summer because of our space. We had to do all of our programming. We do story time and our big Friday events up at City Hall. And we did surpass um, our numbers last year. And for us, um, we had um, over 1,100 people attend our programs this summer. That's um, trying to average about three to four programs uh, a, a week, depending on a mix of Children's. And we last summer we did not do story time, but I had overwhelming demand that we not only have our big Friday events, so we moved story time to Wednesdays and we did that. And we had a great turnout. It was lots of fun. Um, speaking of feral kittens, um, <laughs> we've had a bit of feral kittens population. We have a, a bit of a problem in our neighborhood. We've had a number of uh, what's the word for it? Generations of kittens born under the library. So these are literary, well-read cats. <laughs> so, um, Hemingway cats. Hemingway yes. cats. Um, well, I don't know about that. What about Austin cats or something, something else? But um, we have, I adopted a previous generation one. She's one of the most, I can't imagine life without her. Um, we trapped the, black, the most recent ones, four of them. I got one adopted, 
three remain in my bathroom at home. <laughs> Socializing them, they're she's sweet and she'll beautiful. bring it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Good. 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 But check out a book, get a kitten. I'm thinking of it. Inner okay. branch, man. We want them to go to good homes if you know of anybody. Seriously, uh, the uh, Lake County Shelter, Astatula, they're full. Misfits is full. Um, I have the option to spend, well, we have between the library staff and our two wonderful neighbors on either side of us, we have in the last year uh, spayed eight. But the one that we didn't get is the one that had the kittens. And they named her after me ages ago, Josie. So Josie had these lovely little kittens. Um, seriously, if you know of anybody, because we can spay them and then put them back in the neighborhood, but I'd rather they have homes than of course. They're, they're very pretty. They're about 10 weeks old. Wow. I know the... Um Animal shelter, I guess they're, they've, they've got a mobile van or bus or something that's coming for them. They're going to start visiting local areas to do adoptions as well. A giant like trailer yeah. that will open up. So They do wonderful things, and the last Saturday of the month they will stay for $10. Mm -hmm. and, and they, if, if the cat's young enough and they think they can socialize it, they'll save it for adoption. But yeah, so I'm serious, people. Really. Please, <laughs> please. Please help us, because um, they're, you know, they're wonderful cats. She lives next door to the crazy cat lady. <laughs> yes. And they've given me a little, uh, one of those magnetic things to put on my car. Oh, because you're crazy cat, crazy cat lady. I have four of my own right now. I don't need seven. <laughs> the neighbors have ten on one side, and I think four on the other. But we appreciate it. Just an update on the library. I know it's tough. Everybody keeps asking. Um, the city of Mineola is is expanding or building a new fire station up at City Hall, so that's where all their energy is right now. Not to mention they're adding a splash pad and a <laughs> um, <laughs> skate park and uh, all these things to the city things. They haven't forgotten about us, but I'm working on and I'm working on an RFP right now and hope to have one in the middle of September and to put that out so we can get started. Because we really, really need it. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Bob, any updates from Leesburg? Yes, Leesburg Library has had its usual busy summer, although I can't quite get myself to put summer in the past tense yet. <laughs> the weather is still, <laughs> still having a busy summer. But the one comment I would like to, to, to talk about is our uh, the Smithsonian exhibition, uh, sports exhibition, that uh, was really quite amazing. I, I spent a fair amount of time in there. And, um, could have spent more. They, they really did an excellent job on um, just a lot of sports history and memorabilia, um, state, local, some local, and national. Um, but Bob, my only complaint, there's no tennis. What? There's no tennis. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing about tennis. You, you know, think no, of hard. Yes, I noticed that. Yes. Uh, as a tennis, ex-tennis player, I know yeah. nothing on tennis. But the rest, the rest yes. of the exhibit was good. Um, they have now moved on to their next uh, spot. Uh, I don't have a door count, but I think it was pretty well attended. Thank you very much. Doc, do you have anything from Lady Lynch by any chance? Or? Well, I could throw a few stats at you. Uh, Marcia Brinson, our own brand, she does an excellent job. and. She does a real nice report. And uh, being an ex-principal, I've seen a lot of reports about that. She did a good job on her job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had a pretty successful summer. Uh, we had 400 children in summer programs this summer, which I thought was excellent. Mm -hmm. And we're, we also had uh, checked out, the youth checkout, which I'm big on youth being in my former life. 2,500 books were checked out by kids. I thought that was excellent. And items total this year, we have increased a little more than 1,000 items that have uh, checked out, 74,000, up to 74,000 now. And what amazed me is that we collected $1,000. <laughs> Fines, photocopies. <laughs> yeah. Out of county, we get some out of county because uh, mm -hmm. you know, Lady Lake Sound Villages was so Central County, much mm -hmm. bigger. And they, they have a couple of uh, library 
areas of their own. And also, what's nice, we had 17 volunteers that put in 227 hours. We could have more volunteers, but you're good, you get into a budget situation because of the uh, activity that and all that. Yeah. How many hours do you think it's been? Uh, 227 hours. Yeah, we're, we're doing pretty well, huh? Being my previous life, I was very skeptical about a lot of things. I'm a big library fan. <coughs> but yeah, we're good one. So we like you on the board then. Thank you very much. And did you want to talk about Eustace at all, or are you going to save it for October? No, I have a little bit. So <laughs> we've been busy getting ready for the Lake County um, partnership and cleaning up our databases. But just to brag about the summer, we had our highest level ever of summer meeting with over 800 kids attending that, which has been exciting. And my favorite thing, I'm not going to go on and on, but this year we did, we always have um, Hatch a Chicken where we have a whole incubator and for the 28 days and you, the kids get to watch every day until the, but this year we live streamed it. So we had over 342 people live streaming our chicken hatching, which was very exciting. <laughs> And other than that, we're still continuing our passport training for, to be a passport facility, and that's, that's not it, but that's, what, that's the summation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Leslie, how's Mont Bird? Well, the cat ate my homework. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will take that and once a year. I, I have six cats, and uh, I had not, yes, said, Mary was going to come, you know, my mm -hmm. alternate. She had a cat emergency. <laughs> So she called me up, and I'm, I'm here, and actually I could plead, uh, and my husband's fine, but I have spent the last few days in the emergency room with him, and, um, and so I plead, um, I haven't gotten in and talked to Kathleen to get these wonderful numbers and everything, and of course Mount Bird is a, a little slower paced town than a lot. <laughs> but Linda Miles said they've done really well this year too. Yes, There's a lot of turnout. Which yes, uh, Kathleen's been excited, but I'm not. I didn't do my homework. I'm sorry to say. Sorry. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but I'm here. Yes. Hey, you know, part of success in life is just showing up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll be better prepared next time. Is there any other business that needs to come before this group? Any other comments? Oh, I've almost done as well as you do. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm so excited. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Whoa, I'm so excited. Bob.